Hello. Uh, welcome back to the Learn to Code podcast. Uh, my name is Jorge Escobar. Well, that subtitle is not going to hold, but anyway. Uh, my name is Jorge Escobar, and I'm being uh, studying very hard, learning Python in this uh, past couple of weeks. Uh, I I just finished uh, the Python develop, developer uh, course on Udemy. Well, that's not really the real name, but I'm going to get it anyway. Um, well, uh, I feel expanded uh, right at the end. The last section that I um, uh, that I was working on was uh, machine learning and data engineering, I believe. And um, I think that uh, that subject is going to require its own course by itself. Um, I see that um, after learning the programming language, which is very deep, the teacher really got into uh, the... Um, I, I, I wonder if there is something left to learn in Python in the sense of syntaxes. Um, we, I learned object-oriented programming in Python, functional programming in Python, um, uh, decorators, that's something similar to annotations in Java. Uh, lambdas, expressions, uh, regular expressions, uh, and many other um, syntaxes-related subjects. Uh, we even get to learn um, proper unit testing in Python, a little bit uh, of unit testing in Python, because that uh, I would consider that a subject on, on its own. Um, but uh, I think uh, it, it is a really good um, uh, section there on the course. Um, we managed to learn, what else, uh, web development with Flask. Um, but uh, I would say that uh, the course is divided in two main sections. The first one is, I would call it the, um, the Python syntaxes related subjects. Basically, uh, all the syntaxes, how to write Python, how to run Python, how to write the statements, how to run your, um, how to import models, how to work with models, how to create your own models. Um, and basically all the nooks and crannies of working with Python, you know? Uh, working with Python has been a, a really interesting um, experience for me. Uh, none, most of those uh, subjects are not really new, or very few were new to me. Um, for example, the object-related, uh, the object-oriented programming subjects. Um, I do have a background as a Java developer, so the main pillars of object-oriented programming. I'm very familiar with those. Um, and uh, the implementation that Python did with those uh, with those pillars uh, was really interesting. And, uh, and it turns out that uh, Python is not limited to just object-oriented programming, just like Java is. Um, you can actually create functional programming with Python, and you can create uh, structured programming with Python. So. Basically, in a single programming language, you have at least three different ways or um, three different ways to organize your code. And basically, that's what um, programming paradigms are in the end. Uh, programming paradigms like uh, object orientation, like uh, functional programming, like structured programming are just ways to organize your code. And... Uh, uh, um, I'm very glad that I find Python in this time of my life because uh, it's very flexible. It seems pretty mature. It seems um, easy enough to get into and hard to master as any other tool, you know. And uh, what I really like is that uh, it doesn't really take itself too seriously in the sense that um, with object-oriented programming in Python, you don't really define these uh public, protected, and private attributes or methods, you can basically say everything is public. And uh, if you want to override something in any other class, and even in those that you don't really uh, work on, you can do it. So uh, basically, uh, in, in the Java world, that will be considered like uh, outrageous, outrageous, uh, like a, 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 a no-no to do. Uh, but the truth is that, um, uh, I think that's uh, a very sensible decision 
from the Python team to do so because um, really uh, there is a lot of misuse of the protected and private attributes for for methods and attributes basically. So we we really abuse uh, either from the user standpoint like programmer user standpoint and from the developer standpoint so in the sense that um, maybe our black boxes in object orientation are really very um, inaccessible so anyway you have to be very careful to not overwrite um, stuff in python because uh, whatever you name you can even uh, uh, target uh, language specific methods like donder methods um, and well, the thing is, uh, that's the first part of the course, uh, the syntax is part of the course. And um, let me show you, uh, well, if you are uh, watching this on YouTube, you can actually watch what I'm uh, seeing here. Uh, but let me just list, just to not get you lost here, um, uh, a very brief overview of the course. Uh, we have a total of, let me see. Oh. Oh my god 25 sections we have uh 25 sections and um the main course is divided in two in two parts the first one will be the uh, programming fundamentals with python uh you are going to learn python basics python fundamentals data structures object-oriented programming with python and that's a big uh section of the course uh functional programming with python uh lambda functions decorators generators and i had to say that uh decorators and generators i really need to rewatch those and or at least uh train myself and use them properly because uh, i just did the exercises but i already forgot about them so i may like to uh to actually use them properly and lambda functions after that we see a section for debugging error handling which is basically uh your classic try catch blocks uh, in python is called try accept uh, and finally you know those are the the, the proper names um, we have regular expressions like in any other programming language we have uh comprehensions which are basically lists and um lists and topple comprehensions where basically you can create lists in in uh, in Python, I be, uh, are pretty much the analogous to arrays in other programming languages. Um, you may even create uh, these uh, lists and tuples and other data structures um, using something called comprehensions, like list comprehensions, like um, uh, tuple comprehensions, and basically you create an expression that is going to generate the elements inside the list, in this case the array. Um, that's uh, comprehensions in a, um, uh, we had models, models are basically imports and you can uh, divide or organize your code in a more um, organized way with models. You are basically creating several scripts and you can divide um, your program or your scripts in different files and use those files to be imported um, and create models themselves. So uh, I learned how to do that in a local fashion. Let's say like uh, if I want to create uh, a better uh, division for my code, for my source code, I will create a, a model for one thing, uh, maybe a model, uh, a file for, for, a, um, for an entire model. And that model may contain just one function, or maybe I want to create uh, one file to store an entire class with all its methods and all its uh, attributes, you know, a more classic um, division of um, uh, of code there. Uh, after that, we learn a little bit about virtual environments, um, and I believe that that subject should have come way earlier. Basically, virtual environments allow you to install models and other software in virtual machines uh, just for your specific uh, project. Uh, let's say that uh, your dependencies uh, that you are using during development, 
uh, are work, you, you develop, you push uh, the main, um, you publish your work and the software is working great. Uh, but after some time passes, uh, some of your dependencies or, or the models that you are actually using for your project, uh, they get updated. And if you try to update the models, maybe some things are going to break because sometimes libraries and frameworks change the way to interact with uh, with objects and you need to change your code accordingly. If you don't want to suffer too much, you can create a virtual environment and specify which versions of your models are you going to use with that project in a specific layer, you know. So you can create an environment, specify your dependencies and what versions of those dependencies are required for your project to work. And you can basically uh, encapsulate all of this into a virtual environment. If you need to deploy somewhere else, you can take this virtual environment alongside your source, co your source code and make it part of your deployment by basically generate your virtual environment again with the specific dependencies and versions of those dependencies, you know. Uh, after virtual environments, we are uh, getting developer environments like PyCharm, Jupyter, Notebooks, VS Code, and Sublime Text, and more. Uh, the course is being given on Sublime Text Plus, I think. Sublime Text. Uh, I've been using Visual Studio Code with, without any trouble. And uh, on this chapter, we see how to install Jupyter Notebooks, but we didn't use that up until the end of the course. So I wonder... Um, uh, well, I will um, refresh the installation of Jupyter Notebooks and how to use it. Uh, but you, you are, if you are watching this course in, in its entirety, by the end of the course, you are going to need to get back to developer environments and uh, rewatch the Jupyter Notebooks installation videos. Uh, after that, we have uh, file processing, basic file processing. You know your images, text files, PDFs, CSVs. Uh, you know, your basic uh, file management. And I have to say that compared to Java, Python really does handle files very easily. In Java, you had to interact uh, with file streams, with IO streams, and I don't know what other classes you need to actually uh, know how to handle just to open a text file. And here it's really easy to do with a with a simple statement. You can open a file, uh, read the contents of the file, and store data from the file into variables and you can even open binary files like uh, like pdf files image files and assign those files into libraries that actually have the code to process the images or the pdfs or whatever other um, binary files you had uh, lying around there and i don't think that i'm going to be missing uh, java uh, regarding files but anyway uh, and then that's actually the end of the first part of the course. Uh, that said, basically, if you get up until this part, the next section of the, the next part of the course is basically implementation of what you already learned in Python, which is basically you stop learning about Python itself, the language that is, the, langu the, uh, the language of Python, you stop learning um, Python specifically and syntax, and you move into learning how to build stuff or implementing stuff with Python. And we uh, we have web development with Python. In this case, um, I was hoping to see something related to Django 4, uh, but this course is really old. It's like, um, I think I had seen dates uh, on the videos from back to 2017 and 2019. Uh, so I guess this is one of those courses that the author just keeps uh, updating uh, just to have a, an excuse to set it to the current year, you know. Um, but anyway, uh, it's still uh, very, uh, since it's a programming language course, uh, most of, uh, uh, almost everything is still relevant up to today. And uh, even the, even web development with Flask, uh, it, it, it worked pretty much uh, just fine. And if there is some uh, little differences, the author took the liberty to update um, uh, not the videos themselves, uh, but before the video, the outdated video, he adds uh, a comment or a page uh, specifying that, well, uh, in recent memory, this uh, uh, 
I'm going to be writing on the video uh, this method over here, but it's really called uh, some other way in a recent version of this uh, library or, or method or whatever, you know. Uh, after, after web development, we move into the realm of, um, let me see the, the projects here. Uh, let me see the projects. Web development, we move with uh, scripting with Python, and basically scripting with Python is uh, working with files, working with images, um, uh, and we actually get into an interesting project called uh, Twitter with Python. Um, and after this was an odyssey from, uh, uh, I've been working very hard to get access to the Twitter API. And I was able to get in contact with somebody on the Twitter development team on Twitter. And I was able to get my hands into a developer account on my own. And I'm going to be uh, making uh, one project for Twitter and working with Twitter. Um, I did something very simple. I did a bot that basically tweets a Python joke uh, from time to time. Um, um, but uh, at this time it's manual execution, you know, uh, if I want to tweet the, uh, a random joke, I just need to run the, the script manually. Uh, the idea would be to install it on a computer, maybe in my home, or maybe in my laptop and set uh, a cron job in, in Linux in order to, to execute the, the Python script. Uh, I haven't done that because uh, I, <laughs> I don't want to spam. Uh, if I make a mistake and I uh, end up spamming the the uh, Twitter API, I'm going to be in trouble. I don't know. Uh, and I want to do that, uh, but I wanted to finish the course first instead of um, digressing uh, on that uh, Twitter Twitter project that I'm going to be making next. Well, uh, as you may not know, uh, I don't have a job right now. I was working as a data engineer, but uh, right now I am between jobs. And that's my main motivation right now of learning Python because uh, I see a lot of demand for Python developers and I see a very little offer. So that's why I'm learning Python to get a job or working as a Python developer. So um, I actually learned enough about web development here uh, to be able to research other courses that may help me develop uh, websites. Um, for what I gathered, I had two real options. One, uh, the obvious one is Flask. I have experience working with Flask by building RESTful APIs, very simple stuff. Uh, and on this course, I learned how to actually render websites with Flask, not just uh, sending data back and forth using Flask like uh, using basic endpoints. Uh, so I learned how to use temp uh, templating, how to create websites with Flask. And uh, in theory, I may just uh, read the documentation for Flask and begin building websites. Um, probably I should try that once at least. Uh, maybe I should make that uh, my part of my next project, uh, my Twitter bot project maybe. Uh, and, and create a front end, uh, a web graphic user interface, you know, instead of just executing Python scripts on the on the console, you know. Uh, but anyway, the thing is uh, web development with Flask, uh, a scripting data with Python, a scra a scraping data with Python, that's another section, a really interesting section that allows me to basically um, uh, uh, browse the web, with Python and gather data directly from the HTML code, you know, so I can open uh, websites and I can basically read them and store data from those websites into Python. And well, the world opens a lot of options once you had done that, because uh, uh, one thing comes to mind, maybe data analysis or maybe gathering prices from uh, eShop websites, you know, and making my own database of products and services and prices and see where to get the best prices, you know, maybe get the best offers. Uh, um, and basically build uh, uh, my own product database uh, with current up uh, and basically update the prices uh, whenever I want, you know, that would be another project. Uh, scraping data will have to um, uh, one project that I'm thinking of is uh, gathering pictures. 
uh, from websites, let's say a, a gallery website, and I want all the pictures from that website, or um, I may just uh, uh, set up a bot that is going to be web scraping the entire website for pictures and saving them in folders, you know. Uh, that would be okay. Uh, or for example, in Twitter, uh, if there is a, an, I know an artist called, uh, her Twitter handle is Nell Art, something like that. And uh, she's making uh, this Pokedex project of hers. That's basically a drawing uh, Pokemons from every generation. And she's basically creating uh, these uh, pictures of Pokemon. And I may like to data mine that, basically uh, scrape all of those pictures and save them in a Pokedex file, uh, in a Pokedex folder or something like that. And scraping data with Python allows you to do that and more, you know. Uh, you can actually uh, gather text files, like uh, if you like to um, get the best news from uh, from news websites, you can gather uh, the news and store them in, in, into a text file or maybe a database or maybe render your own uh, news website from different sources, you know. Yeah, why not? Uh, scraping data with Python. Uh, so we have a scripting with Python, a scraping data with Python, web development, and then automation testing with Selenium. Selenium is a library that allows you to uh, open, in this case, in this section, it was a very short section. It was about um, uh, basically browsing websites and simulate iteration interaction between the website and a user. Basically, uh, the website doesn't know any better and you simulate um, clicks and, and typing with Python. So basically you can open a website in, uh, and do automated testing or replicate behavior inside the website. And this is going to allow you to basically do whatever you want um, programmatically, basically, you know, or creating a script. And this is going to allow you to do a lot of things like uh, how to like in your own tweets, uh, without the need to get access to the actual API. In my opinion, having access to the API is way faster and way easier. Uh, and less prompt to getting caught and getting banned. <laughs> uh, so that's why I prefer using the API. But this, um, but Selen with Selenium, you might think that, well, uh, there is little to nothing um, stopping me from creating a bot that uh, creates a lot of accounts for Twitter and, and start spamming or mass reporting. And I had to say that um, Twitter developers are working very hard with security and avoiding such uh, attempts of abuse. So I don't recommend that. Uh, maybe if you, uh, for, for example, there is uh, an example on the course where you auto like your own post. So whenever you post something in your main account, you actually like your, your own post, which is uh, called the, um, how, how, how is it called? Uh, it has a, a name is the, uh, um, well, it's a mental issue, I think, but I don't remember now. Well, the thing is, um, uh, uh, is the egocentric, but no, nah, that's not the name. Well, I don't remember, but the thing is, um, you are, uh, allow you are allowing yourself to interact with websites, clicking on buttons, uh, typing text on input text fields, and basically do whatever you may like to do in a website, like a regular user, but with the help of a Python script, which allows you to basically do whatever you want on, on such website. If you need to log in, you can program your Python uh, script to click on the, on the login button and enter your credentials and click on the, on the, sign, on the sign up or the sign in button. Basically, uh, the website is not going to, to know any better. And that's very helpful in my opinion, because uh, there are a lot of things that you can automate with Selenium, work related. And uh, like, for example, sometimes you are asked to extract data from websites and paste it back into Excel. And instead of doing that, you can basically run a script gather the data, store it in a CSV file, and and do do it pretty fast, basically. Uh, 
and and uh, a manual job that may have cost you an entire day or more days of work uh, could be done by a script in a matter of minutes, you know. Uh, but anyway, after automation and testing, because automation, uh, Selenium, is, is, uh, its purpose here is to, you are developing a website or a web application, um, manual labor uh, is going to be used to test the application and see if, uh, if every single endpoint is working correctly, etc. But uh, that's very slow, a very, uh, um, very time consuming. So the idea with Selenium is that you create an automation bot or a testing bot that allows you to test your own project, your own website, and do it really fast a lot of times, you know? So basically you are validating a, a lot of stuff. And this is, a, this is not the same as unit testing, but um, it, it indeed gets into the realm of testing and automated testing. Uh, but anyway. After that, uh, we get into the final real chapter of the course, which is uh, machine learning and data science. And this is a two hour and three minute uh, session. Uh, and it's really a, a really quick overview of machine learning and data science. Uh, I watched this once and I was following along with the, with the coding exercises. But really, I think this is one of those subjects that requires one or more courses on its own. Uh, but it was really, it was a really good overview. And, I re and I'm getting really interested in working as a machine learning engineer now. Uh, but before that, I need to use my current abilities as database administrator or database developer. And now my new acquire, uh, and acquire new abilities like web development. Uh, to basically gather data. Web scraping is going to help me doing that, data scraping. Uh, I'm going to gather a lot of data because these uh, machine learning models, uh, in, in, they use uh, uh, programming logic, but most of the time you're going to be looking for data to be able to train your models. And that's the most important thing on machine learning, gathering data and clean data for that matter. Um, after that, there are some extra bits that come from uh, a yet older uh, web development course from the same author. Uh, I watch those videos, but they seem really outdated. So uh, it's a bonus. Uh, and there is some extra bits where he teaches you how to use Git and GitHub, how to contribute to open source, etc., etc. Um, and some personal videos where he is basically uh, a talking head, uh, uh, being grateful for the amount of students that are enrolling, that are rolling in into this course, you know. Uh, and appendix for HTML forms, because uh, some HTML forms are being used here. Uh, and, and that's basically the end of the, of the course. So the, the real final chapter is the machine learning and data science uh, section. <clears throat> so what do I uh, rate this course? I think it's a five to five, just because of the first part, which is the main part, uh, the learning the Python syntax and how to actually program the scripts in Python. And the second part uh, is a really big bonus because you are seeing an overview, a, a glance of the implementations of Python in the real world. Basically, it's a... Um, uh, basically, you're going to be learning, the, let me see, let me see again, uh, scripting with Python, you know, uh, working with files in Python, working with libraries and other models in Python, um, then uh, data scraping with Python, uh, web development with Python, automation and testing with Python, and machine learning and data science with Python. Those are the areas where you may dwell into, but the thing is that, uh, the common element among them is Python in the end. So as long as you keep practicing Python, you are going to uh, to be able to do all of that you want. Um, at least with web development, you have access to saving stuff in databases, which implies that you're going to be working with that analysis and uh, whatnot, who knows? So uh, it's been really interesting. Uh, I am looking forward to create uh, something else with Python. I don't really know right now what's going to be my next step as a, 
as a learner because uh, I'm looking for a job and uh, I have several courses on site. Uh, specifically, I'm looking something regarding uh, the most recent version of Django uh, and learn how to build websites with Django properly. And after that, I know there is, uh, there is uh, uh, another framework that is installed upon Django, which is called um, REST API. Um, uh, I don't remember the name, but it's basically uh, uh, REST APIs with Django REST framework. That's the course, uh, which is basically a framework to build RESTful APIs easier on Django. And this is basically a framework for Django framework. So it's a framework for another framework. Um, and this is just a, a demonstration of how flexible Python really is. Um, I should buy these uh, courses, at least uh, I'm looking for one for Django and another one for the REST APIs with uh, REST framework um, uh, for Django. Uh, the one for the REST framework for Django, I already had one, but I am still on, uh, on the undecided on any uh, recent or or good course on the Django subject because uh, uh, the thing with Udemy is that uh, Udemy doesn't tell you in uh, the date of the of the the date of release for the course so that's a mystery for you if uh, if the author released a course in back in 2016 or 2014 and he decides to, you know, I'm going to put a, a text file on the course in, in May 2022. If he does that, uh, then the course is, uh, it reads as updated for this year, you know. And some developers and some, uh, some, uh, some teachers here, like uh, in the course I just described, uh, the course is from way back in 2017, but he's selling it as 2022, uh, you know. Uh, the course is great. So, and there are some differences, uh, but those differences are explained. So you don't really suffer about them. But not all teachers do that. So it's a wishy-washy thing to do, I think. But anyway, uh, what did I click here? I don't know. But anyway, uh, the thing is, uh, the course name is the Complete Python Developer in 2022, Zero to Mastery. And the author name, let me get it because it's, uh, it's a weird name, is uh, Andre Neagoye, something like that. Uh, he's the founder of Zero to Mastery.io. Uh, his Twitter handle is, uh, let me see, Andre Neagoye. Mm, it's just his name. It's a really weird name. But anyway, uh, I'm going to be looking for a Django course and a Redful API course. But before that, I may like to delve into unit testing. Because unit testing is a thing that I used to do a lot uh, during my years as a Java developer. And not so much after that. Because um, there are a lot of books about unit testing in Java but not many other books in uh, about unit testing in other programming languages. Um, uh, but anyway, uh, I'm looking for that. Uh, maybe unit testing in Python. I haven't found a course about that yet. I found uh, automated software testing with Python with a chapter about unit testing, but uh, uh, not so much for actual unit testing practices and, and unit testing in, with Python. So I, I, I'm still looking for that. Um, but anyway, uh, what else am I looking for? Uh, Inform Informatica Power Center? Not really, uh, because I need a license for that software. And uh, I'm going to be focusing. Oh, wait a minute. There is a course that I already got, uh, and it's called the Ultimate Pandas Bootcamp Advanced. Uh, it's basically uh, a course about. Uh, a library or a framework, I don't know what it is. It's called Pandas, which is basically, Pandas is a library uh, that I will describe as Excel uh, with asteroids, with superpowers. So basically it's a data, uh, data processing and data transformation tool. 
and you use that library or framework i don't know what it is uh with python so you use python for that and well uh the thing is that uh once you um, learn how to use this library it's really useful to manage large amounts of of, that, of data no um to basically work with data and manipulate data and transform data in a really rapid rate and that's what i'm looking for with this course but uh I think that since I don't really have a job right now that I can implement this, this is more like a nice to have thing to, to do. Uh, and I believe that I have on um, my needs right now are to basically start building something with Python. And the things that come to mind is one, a website or uh, 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 scripting with Python. And in this case, I'm working with, uh, with a Twitter API. Uh, I'm doing some experiments, but uh, I may like to do something useful for myself. And in my case, I think that uh, a website is the most uh, common thing that I can basically share with anybody else. Um, and I don't really need to explain too much, just share a link, open the website, and they can see the website for themselves, you know? That's something uh, that I can basically just share and not worry about. But anyway. Well, uh, uh, I guess this is going to be the end for today. Um, please, uh, thank you for listening, if you indeed are, and see you later. Bye.